to you students. Guys, thank you so much for joining us online for week two of Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Look, we are so excited about the community that's been going on online with CU students. We're hearing from people who are watching, not just here in South Texas, but all across the world. And so guys, thank you so much. Please shoot us a direct message of how this ministry is affecting you. Well, last week we got to kick off this series with talking about what dying and dashing looks like in our relationship with Jesus, right? But today, for week two, we're going to be talking about something that is really fun, something that's really exciting, and it's really something that all of us have done, and that's go through a drive through I don't know if you have ever done that, but I know for me, I have. And uh, I think back in high school, man, me and my friends would always go to the different restaurants in town, and I just began to think, man, about my closest friends, and I don't know, I wanted to paint a picture for you, is that in my life, when it's come with friendships or relationships, when they haven't worked out, it's really been due to a lack of commitment. And it's the same way with my relationship with Jesus, is that when I don't have a very strong relationship with Jesus, it has to do with the lack of commitment on my part. And so when we break it down, we might go, man, well, I've never, uh, you know, not spoken with friends. I've never spoken behind people's backs. I've never done any of that. You might tell yourself that. You probably have. But chances are you have. You have a lack of commitment. And so we've probably done this with our friends. And I would assume at least 99.9%, .9%, you might be the 0.0001% who hasn't, but have done this with God. And the thing about drive throughs is what I love is that you get them very fast. You get to go into the drive through you get it fast, and then you get to leave and you have your food. You got somewhat of an experience of what that restaurant has to offer. And we think about Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A has this awesome app on their phone. It's my favorite restaurant ever. If you know me, you know that. Uh, they have this awesome app on your phone where you can literally order when you're 15 minutes away. They'll go ahead and start cooking your food. You can drive up, they give you your order, and you can leave. You don't get the full Chick-fil-A experience but you get part of what Chick-fil-A has to offer. See, here in our lives, we cannot treat Jesus like that. We can't treat Jesus like a drive through And that might sound silly to you. You might laugh at that. But how often do we do that? How often do we come into God's house? How often do we come into the student ministry or maybe watch online and we get part of what God has to offer? I wrote a couple things down. Man, maybe we want to order the Jesus that is all grace. Man, I want the Jesus that went to the cross and died for me. I want the Jesus that, you know, was out healing people, partying with people, right? Like, I want that Jesus. But, man, the Jesus that was telling me, you know, hey, I need to go and try and pursue, uh, you know, be, becoming more like Jesus, pursue holiness, those kind of things. Man, I, I don't know if I want that Jesus. I don't know if I want the truth of Jesus. I want the grace, but I'll go ahead and take that off the order. I'll go ahead and take the truth off the order because I want just the grace-filled Jesus. See, Jesus was both grace and truth. So we have to be mindful of that. Man, I, I just, I just want to come to church and I want to be encouraged. I, I, don't, I don't necessarily want to do anything. I just want to come in. I want to hear a good message. I want to be able to get my feelings with worship. And I really just want to take away everything else. See, I just want to feel encouraged. I, I don't really want to serve anywhere. I don't really want to do anything more than that. Or maybe it's, you know, I just want my needs met and not really be part of the local church, not really go out and serve my community. I just want people to serve me. See, how often is it in life where we do that? Where we go to Jesus for what we want instead of Jesus with a relationship? You see, it would be really hard, we talked about this last week, it would be really hard to have a relationship with somebody if you only spoke to them when you needed them. You know, it's almost like in a, in a relationship where you're just stringing somebody along and, you know, you go to them or you text them when you want something, but then when they reach out, you, like, ghost them. You know, like, that, we'll do that with Jesus. We'll do that in our relationship with Christ. And so we have to be mindful that we don't treat Jesus like a drive through Man, I did some math this week, which, if you know me, you know that that was kind of difficult, all right? But I did 24 times 7, you know, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and it came out to be 168 hours a week. Did you know that you get 168 hours a week to do something crazy for God's kingdom here on earth? Did you know that you get 168 hours a week to go out and serve the local? Do you get 168 hours a week to do whatever you'd like throughout that week? And you're like, well, I sleep 12 hours a day. Well, don't do that, all right? But 168 hours a week, we only get to hang out for one hour, which means you have 167 hours throughout the week to go out and empower somebody with the gospel, go out and share the truth of Jesus Christ with people. Did you know you get 167 hours? That is crazy. So are we treating Jesus like a drive through or are we, are we treating like we actually want to spend time with him, sit down with him across the table and have a conversation? Don't just want part of Jesus, want all of Jesus. See, there are a few stories in scripture 
that talk about this, talk about people who weren't all in with God, but one that really stuck out to me is this guy, Judas. Now, you might know of Judas. Judas is uh, the quote-unquote bad guy of the Bible. He's kind of right there with Satan. Judas is the one who sold out Jesus. But the thing about Judas is that he was actually a disciple. Did you know that? Jesus, while he would go and preach to thousands, he had a close-knit group around him that he was teaching things throughout that time, and they were called his disciples, just his, his friends. And Judas was part of that. See, but the crazy thing about Judas is that Judas wasn't just a friend. No, no, no. Judas was a treasurer, which means Judas was in charge of the money that people were giving to be able to go and help out the poor, help out the ministry, things like that. And so Judas was given leadership by Jesus. Judas was, was given something by Jesus to do to elevate the kingdom. But here was the biggest thing that was wrong with Judas is that as soon as something that looked better than what he, what he was already offered by Jesus came along, he sold Jesus out. See, it was a heart issue with, you, with Judas. And we see this in John chapter 12 where there's, this, uh, there's a story where this, this lady is literally pouring this expensive perfume over Jesus' feet. And Judas gets very upset. He's like, why are you doing this? This is very expensive perfume. You could have sold this. You could have given the money to me and I could have given it to the poor. Well, what we know about Judas, he really just wanted the money for himself. But he, could, he was like, man, you know, I could have given it to the poor. What is wrong with you? And I love this story. It says in John 12, verse 4 through 8. It says, But Judas Iscariot, the disciple who would soon betray him, said, The perfume was worth a year's wages. Now, a year's wages is a lot of money. All right, you ask your parents, what's the year wages? That's what helps, you know, you're, you be able to watch what you're, you're watching this on. That's what helps uh, you be able to live where you are, right? Like this perfume was worth a lot of money. It should have been sold in the money given to the poor. So it's not that he cared for the poor. He was a thief. And since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often stole for himself. So Judas is like, look, you give me $5, I'll take three for myself, and we have two to give to the poor, right? So we have to be mindful of who Judas was. And then Jesus replied, leave her alone. Wow. He's like, Judas, why are you, like, calm down, leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. So once again, Jesus is letting his disciples know, hey, I'm about to go die for you. I'm going to raise back to life, but I'm about to go die for you. He says, she's been doing this in preparation for a burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. You see, pretty close after this, Judas got an offer and he sold Jesus out. Jesus ended up being arrested for something that, you know, he didn't do. Things that people were just trying to arrest him as the Pharisees. They were the religious leaders of the day. They were upset with what Jesus was saying to the people and the message that he was bringing because it contradicted what they were saying, which is things that we have to do. And Jesus was saying, bringing a message of grace, okay, and truth. And so when he came, they came to arrest him. It literally says that Judas brought them and he kissed Jesus' cheek and then they arrested Jesus. Judas was in the middle of Jesus being arrested. And he was also one of his closest friends. See, I think there's a lot that we can learn from Judas. Judas was not all in with Jesus, was he? No, Judas was being attempted with money. He was being tempted by the enemy with something that he knew he was going to be able to win by. See, Judas was a guy that wanted to follow Jesus as long as it fit his sinful lifestyle. Is that you? I know I've been there. Like, Jesus, I'll follow you as long as I'm still going to be able to do my own thing. See, but the whole essence of following Jesus is, hey, I'm going to leave what I've been doing behind, and Jesus, I'm going to follow you with everything that I have. So we have to be mindful of that Judas did not want to give up his sinful lifestyle. He was cool with hanging around Jesus, but he was cool with it until it really affected his life in a really powerful way, and then he sold him out. See, are we going to physically sell Jesus out to the cross like Judas did? No. We're not going to, but every time that we sin, every time that we separate ourselves from a relationship with Jesus, every time we put a barrier, and that's what sin does, it separates. Every time we put a barrier between us and our relationship with Jesus, we are putting Jesus right back on the cross. Whether we feel like we are or, we not, or we're not, you have to be mindful of that. See, following Jesus will not always be convenient. You know, that's the thing about drive throughs is, man, they're convenient. Man, I love going to a drive through if I'm, you know, having a quick lunch, or maybe I don't have time to stop, or you know, I just need something convenient. I'm taking Josie out, and we're just gonna go get something real quick. Like we we need something that's convenient. Following Jesus is not always gonna be convenient. You're gonna be stretched. See, in scripture it says, consider trials pure joy. See, when things come at you in life, we're supposed to learn from them and say, Thank you, Jesus, so much for allowing me to be a part of this. But how often do we just get upset? Man, I, was, I didn't sign up for this when I became a Christian. I, I signed up for a perfect lifestyle. 
not a lifestyle where we're going to be able to do it with somebody who is perfect. So we have to be mindful. Jesus is not always going to be convenient. And being able to walk through every day, people are going to come after you because you know why? You put a bullseye on your back for the enemy to say, hey, you you want to make yourself a Christian? You want to make yourself a Christ follower? Okay, I'll come after you. We have to be mindful of that, that following Jesus will not always be convenient. And so maybe tonight for you, you you struggle with this mindset. You struggle with the idea of what it truly means to follow Christ. Well, I want to encourage you that whether at a young age, you made a decision to follow Jesus, and now you're 12, 13, 14 years old, and you're going, man, I, I don't know if I, if I have belief, because I've been doing my own thing. You know, I've, I followed Jesus, but I put him in the back seat of my vehicle, and I've been driving. That was me. And so there's no shame in that other than admitting it and saying, Jesus, I, I know I've been wrong, but I want to get into a relationship with you. And so right now, wherever you are, I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. See, tonight was short and quick to the point because Man, I just wanted you to see how quickly we can wreck our lives. We are all in with Jesus. Because even somebody who was his closest friend while he was here on earth sold him out. So we have to be mindful of that for our lives. So wherever you are, bow your head and close your eyes. See, maybe tonight for you, I'm going to talk to two, two separate groups. Maybe tonight for you, you have been in a relationship with Christ before. You've made that decision. Jesus, I want to follow you with my life. And for that first two to three months, it was great. And then you just kind of started to do your own thing. You fell into your old habits. I've been there. You see, tonight for you, I want you to get back into a relationship with Jesus. I want you to get into a moment with God and say, God, I need you. I know I haven't been following you with everything I have. And tonight that quits. I don't want to treat your son Jesus like a drive through As funny as that sounds, I want all of Jesus. I want to be able to sit down at a table and have a relationship with him every single day of my life. And then the other side of group, I want to talk with you because maybe you've never made that decision. Maybe you didn't know much about Jesus. You kind of came across this live on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube, and you're going, man, Jesus, who, who is this guy? Well, Jesus came down to earth to die for you and for me. And now what Scripture says is that if we declare with our mouth that he is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, then we are saved. And so all you have to do is say this prayer with me. And so would you? I mean, there's people all across online saying this. Would you say this with me? Would you say, dear Jesus, I need you. Please come into my heart. Transform me. I choose you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Man, if that was you tonight, we want you to direct message us. We want to know about the decision that you just made. We are so excited for you. Us as a team, we want to get some resources in your hands because we believe that God just radically changed somebody's life tonight. Well, guys, we're about to get back into a time of worship. Thank you so much once again. It means the world to us that you decided to join us tonight, and you don't want to miss what we have going on for week three. We've got a special guest speaker. We can't wait for you to join us. See you next week.